The Exodus was the most significant event in the memory of the Israelites. It was common for the prophets and psalmists to recall this deliverance as they thought about Israel's developing identity. Not only did the Israelites write about it and pass the memory of the event on to their children, but they also marked the occasion with the symbolic liturgical act of Passover. The Passover meal commemorated God's liberation of the Israelites through Moses from the land of Egypt. This yearly ritual continues for Jews today. In many ways, as Tom Dozman will make clear, Passover and the Exodus event began the process of forging a national identity for the people of Israel. The Exodus from Egypt is the central story of salvation in the Bible for both Jews and Christians. The Passover Haggadah is the Jewish celebration of the Exodus the biblical story of the Exodus attributes the first ritual of the Passover to Moses and the Israelite people during the night of their deliverance from Egypt. This night is special. Its unique character is underscored in the Haggadah service when a child raises the question for those eating the Passover meal, why is this night different from all other nights? The question requires the participants to remember the salvation of God in the Exodus. Through this ritual meal, the Exodus becomes a living force in the ongoing life of Jews, reaffirming in the very act of celebration that the night of Passover is truly different from all other nights. The Synoptic Gospels tell us that Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover Haggadah on the night of Jesus' arrest, inaugurating the Passion of the Christ, which has now become Holy Week for Christians. One of the disciples would have asked the question, why is this night different from all other nights? And the ritual answer, of course, would have been the recitation of the story of the Exodus as it is preserved in Exodus 1 to 15. The Gospels tell us further that in reciting the Exodus, Jesus actually inserted himself into the story of the Exodus as the Passover lamb, becoming for Christians the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. As a result of Jesus connecting the Exodus story to his own story, Christians, like Jews, view the night of Passover as distinct from all other nights. Exodus 1 to 15 explains why the night of Passover is so special. The book of Exodus is a story about the importance of memory, both for God and for humanity. The story opens with the tragic situation in which all humans lack memory. Exodus chapters 1 and 2 clarify that many, many years have transpired since the events in the book of Genesis when God directed Joseph to bring his family to Egypt to live in harmony and abundance with Pharaoh and the Egyptians. That whole generation of Israelites and Egyptians 
has long since died. And those now living in Egypt have no memory of God or these past events, no rituals celebrating God's salvation of Abraham, no memory of Joseph's heroic role in Egypt. The same is true for Pharaoh and the Egyptians. The author tells us, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And without memory, the new Pharaoh has no way of understanding the Israelite people who live all around him. Thus, in the opening chapters of the book of Exodus, people only live in the present time, a time ruled by fear and mistrust. The new Pharaoh is threatened by the Israelite people and seeks power over them first by instituting slave labor and then by killing all the male babies of the Hebrews. The hero Moses is rescued from the death sentence but he too suffers from lack of memory with no knowledge of God or God's past acts of salvation to his ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is no relief from the cycle of tyranny and violence that has taken over life in Egypt. And even Moses' initial desire to save his kinsmen from oppression by killing an Egyptian is judged by a fellow Hebrew as an act of murder. Pharaoh catches wind of Moses' misguided attempt at rescue, forcing Moses to flee Egypt for the desert. God finally enters the story of the Exodus in chapter 3 by appearing to Moses in the burning bush located on Horeb, the mountain of God. God's opening words to Moses are a formal introduction described as a divine self-revelation. I am the God. But this is not all that God reveals to Moses through the burning bush. God combines the divine self-revelation, I am the God, with memory. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God not only reveals the divine character to Moses, God also introduces memory and tradition to Moses, recalling the past promises of salvation to his ancestors, which play no role in his life. The divine appearance to Moses continues throughout chapters 3 to 7. The extended introduction of God to Moses indicates that the story of the Exodus is a story about God's memory, not human memory. The opening chapters of the book of Exodus underscore that God's memory is permanent. It remains active even when human memory fails. The writer of the book of Exodus states, God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Divine memory prompts God to fulfill past promises even when humans are no longer aware of them. The ancient Israelites, Moses and Pharaoh, may be trapped in the tyranny of the present time, but God is not. The Exodus is a story of divine memory and action. Memory forces God to enter human history, to save the Israelite people from slavery and death, and to create a new future by fulfilling past promises to their ancestors. Exodus 7 to 14 narrates the conflict between God and Pharaoh over the fate of the Israelite people. God demands the release of the Israelite people. Pharaoh resists, stating, Who is the Lord that I should heed him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. The arrogant response of Pharaoh sets the stage for an epic battle in which the weapons of war are the forces of nature described as the plagues. God assaults Pharaoh with three cycles of plagues. Each cycle contains three plagues and the cycles increase in intensity as they progress through the elements of nature including water, land, and air. The plagues are intended to demonstrate the power of God to Pharaoh, 
persuading him to release the Israelite people. The continued resistance of Pharaoh leads to the central events of the Exodus in chapters 12 to 14. They too consist of three actions which further explore God's power over creation. The plague of darkness, the death of the Egyptian firstborn, and the destruction of the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. The focus, however, goes beyond the natural elements of water, land, and air to the most primordial features of creation, light and darkness. These opposing forces penetrate to the very core of creation. God proclaims in the book of Isaiah, I am the Lord, there is no other. I form light and create darkness. The primordial character of these elements indicates that the plague of darkness in the unfolding drama of the Exodus is not a story about the night as opposed to the day. It is rather a story about the absence of light altogether. The plague of darkness is more like a black hole in space where light is not simply absent, but consumed. Light, the primordial element of creation, is taken away in the plague of darkness. And this is the setting for the subsequent events of the Exodus. Why is the night of Passover different from all other nights? Because Passover takes place at the darkest moment, midnight, on the night when light itself is consumed. The scene is filled with foreboding, so much so that the darkness acquires its own personality, becoming a force of death at midnight, described as the destroyer. It penetrates every Egyptian home, killing firstborn children, the very essence of family life. But wherever the blood of the Passover lamb is placed on the doorframe, that home is inoculated from the plague of death. The blood is like a light able to turn darkness away. It is as though every home smeared with the blood of the lamb is lit up, shining like a small star in a black hole, driving away the destroyer. The firstborn survive the ordeal and the survival itself creates memory, which makes possible the question, why is this night different from all other nights? The survival of the Passover night is not the whole story of salvation in the book of Exodus. The conflict between God and Pharaoh progresses from the night of Passover to the confrontation at the Red Sea. Pharaoh continues to resist God's claim on the Israelite people. He gathers his army one last time and pursues the Israelite people through the night to the Red Sea where the power of God over nature again takes center stage. God splits the Red Sea in two, allowing the Israelites to walk through the sea on dry ground. Pharaoh also sees his opportunity in this event, and he enters in pursuit of the people. But then, just as light returns to the story at the very break of day, God drowns Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. The biblical author describes the night of Passover as the night of vigil in which God provided protection from death through the blood of the Lamb. Those who survived the night of vigil also experienced the salvation of God at dawn when Pharaoh and his army were destroyed in the Red Sea. The question in the Passover Haggadah, why is this night different from all other nights, can only be asked by a survivor of the vigil. The question creates memory 
for those who observe the Passover. And this sacred memory must be passed on from one generation to the next. The Passover Haggadah also creates hope since the recounting of the past salvation of God also leads to a future vision when all evil will be destroyed like Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. Jewish participants in the Passover Haggadah remember the night of Passover while also looking ahead to the return of Elijah and the New Jerusalem. Christian participants in Holy Week undergo the same process, recalling the Passover of Jesus on Maundy Thursday and the final defeat of evil at dawn on Easter Sunday. In remembrance of these things, the Exodus remains a living force in the lives of Jews and Christians. <laughs>